Yes guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're gonna be going through the top mods you can do on the M140i. So there's a list that I've prepared and obviously most of the mods I've done myself. If not, I've got a company to do them for me. So I'll be shouting out those companies. But yeah, we're gonna go through the main mods that I feel need to happen on the M140i. I think my list was done in order of the most important or the things I would have done first if I owned an M140 from the start. So this video could be quite beneficial to you. What the hell was that? Okay, so before we start the video, I wanna say a big shout out to Adrian Flux who ensure me personally personally um, there's also a number that you can call they've given me a number um, also there's a code unfortunately is my name not being arrogant or anything but it's my name so if you use if you call him up and you use my name just write Tim Williams or tell him Tim Williams obviously has the code they can knock up to 15% off your boat this road is absolute all right so starting from the top in my opinion the most important mod i had to get when i first got my car was a ghost auto watch auto immobilize something like that hit up auto communications if you are interested i'm not sure the right name but everyone just knows it as the ghost what it does it stops your car from ever move, move, moving move, move, moving i saw a cow over there so obviously when i had to like say hello in the language and that um this road is shocking fam so ghost auto watch auto immobilizer the ghost what it does it doesn't allow your car to move without you inputting a series of like inputs into the steering wheel or whether it's the the cluster here um and then your car will move simply put it's a security system that means your car can never move unless you know the code to your car so you can set it to be whatever you want um i don't know how long it takes probably about an hour nick will come down and install that for you and then your car ain't going nowhere check out luke hampshire's video he's done a video quite recently got one done to his m140 as well so make sure you check that video i'll leave um, a little notification over here for you to watch we are turning right Right, sir. Yeah. The grip. The grip. Sorry about that. It's a tad bit savage. Savage. And then with that being said, the next thing you want to do, in my opinion anyway, is get a diff. So there's a lot of controversy. Like obviously I met Mark and obviously Sam down at Bedford at the last track day with Reg as well and Paul and Lewis. There's met quite a few guys down there. Nathan, everyone, forensic detailing, we met everyone down there at the last track day. And something that meant that Mark said to me, he said, hey mate, hey, hey Tim, how are you? I was like, yeah mate, all good. He's like, the diff load of rubbish. I was like, okay, sorry mate, sorry. Okay. He was like, but I'll get what he was saying. So let me just rephrase what I said in the diff video. The M Performance diff is a fine diff, and all three of them, the major three, which is the, the Quaif, the Wave Track, and obviously the M Performance, they all do the same thing here, or like with, with a little bit of changes, whatever. But if you're going for a diff, they all do it. They're going to give you added traction. If you do decide to track your car hard enough that you get three wheels in the air, that's up to you. Then the Wave Track and the M Performance probably will be better for you. But where I do track the car, but I'm not tracking it that hard that the wheel's going to go in the air, it wasn't beneficial to me. And like I said, a diff is going to do the same thing to the average driver and also if you track it bearing in mind i have tracked the car since doing the the diff it does the job it absolutely does it. it changes the car massively you can get some nice easy now easy um you can get some nice slides out sort of thing so don't don't go like believing the hype that you gotta get this you got that you just gotta get a diff and and for me it was the quave luckily for me as well i was part of a group buy so that definitely definitely helped but yeah a diff is definitely definitely something i would recommend for you to get on your m140i because they're very very loose to be honest and they're not very predictable road ahead closed okay that's why you're telling me to go that way eh ways i'll listen to you next time um yeah as i was saying it's predictable get one it is a bit expensive but it's one of those things that you're gonna definitely definitely get your money's worth unlike a few of the other mods that I would, i'm probably gonna mention but they'll be a, a, a little tad bit lower down in the list as as a priority in terms of priority also i would suggest xhp there's been a lot of rumors saying oh it doesn't make a difference but for me like i said guys try and keep it real with you guys i'm not gonna hype up something that isn't necessary i'm gonna just give you my honest opinions so i don't know i'm coming back to say oh yeah tim's chatting a load of rubbish for me it definitely made a difference bearing in mind i drive in manual most of the time so the upshifts especially in traction and dsc off mode were a lot sharper and when you do leave the gearbox to do its own thing in sport mode because that's when you're really really gonna have the benefit of xhp it's a night and day it's a nine day difference 100 percent because the blips on the upshift the fact you can have the d d65 as well there's loads of optional extras and me and define code in the main man obviously hit him up if you're interested we've done a video on it and it's a definitely 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 a big game changer and if you are running added power whether it's a stage two and upwards i would definitely recommend it um, some people say it's not necessary but for me personally why not why not get the gearbox in the right state before you go adding more power and on top of that 
it's just it's the up you know what, i can't really do it because i've got cars in front today but it's mainly the up shifts the up shifts and the down shifts and the response of the gearbox it's always in the right gear arcs around people will tell you it's a good mod it's definitely a good mod to do it's a good mod to have a good mod to do i don't think that made, made didn't think that made sense okay so in regards to the kit that i have i actually have the maxton kit there are other brands but i've decided to go for the maxton kit and this isn't i think this is the v2 so there's quite a few versions but i decided to go for the v2 front and the v2 side which has obviously got that gray pinstripe along the side of it there will be some changes coming to the exterior of this car very very shortly but yeah sit tight for that um yeah so i decided to go for the max and the reason why is i recommend for you to get any form of split or anything like that because if you do not want to lower your car simply by putting on the splitter or whether you do just the side skirts as well there is a big noticeable difference from the front from the side etc etc and it gives it like i said a lot more of an aggressive look and it makes it stand out in comparison to the um the normal stock one series on top of that maxton that's obviously i'm not sponsored by them by any means but they also do the rear spats as well so you can see on the edge there it does bring the rear a bit lower so that's something that i would definitely def definitely recommend as well if you are going for the side skirts and the front splitter definitely go for the side spats i believe they're around 60 80 quid and that's definitely something that i would recommend because like i said it brings the whole car down a tad even if you don't want to go springs and spaces it's, it's entirely up to you but i believe it definitely definitely pairs up well with the rest of the kit stance i've got here is the motec 25 20 so it's got a 25 on the front and 20 on the rear so it gives it that nice even drop there are a few other brands that obviously claim to do the same thing but notice i've noticed it straight away having driven quite a few m140s is the motec stance doesn't have any bad rake i've noticed that there's a few that claim to be 25 20 but straight away the front seems to be a lot higher and it doesn't sit right at all so they do the stance and the stance plus the stance plus is i think it's a 30 and a 25 drop don't quote me on it check it out yourself but i think it's a 30 and a 25 drop so just an extra 0.5 all round and that probably brings it down ever so slightly more but it also changes the handle enough i've been told ever so slightly as well so this isn't really a handling mod but it does obviously drop the center of gravity so you will notice that there will be maybe a negligible, negligible do we understand okay let me use simple words there'll be a tiny difference in terms of how the car rolls and etc but in terms of rolling and all of that stuff that comes from obviously the arbs and obviously your dampers sort of thing depending on the setting that you've got also if you do decide to go for spaces as well you'll notice that it kind of brings the wheels out ever so slightly which is a perfect in my opinion setup i think you go for 12 on the front 15 on the rear or if you want to do full rick tech spec you can go 15 on the front 15 on the rear as well which looks absolutely bag on okay so the mirror caps i've got here these are the auto id mirror units sorry excuse me not the caps there are the caps you can literally just bang this cover off and stick the caps on but i decided to go for the full unit and the unit in my opinion looks a lot better because it's seamless it's all in one as opposed to just having this bit here sticking out and obviously having nothing behind it so this is like the m2 m34 sort of look and it looks absolutely bang on in my opinion i decided to go for the ferret gray so i decided to, to be different and obviously keep the ferret gray but like i said there are changes incoming so we'll be going to dub customs very very shortly to do some changes on the car but yeah like I just like how they look in comparison to the others and like i said we're not knocking any others because again auto id do sell the other caps other units sort of thing but for me it's what i wanted from day one when i said when i got the car and this is what i've got so big big shout out to them okay so if you're like me and you bought the car just for the engine and you don't really care about the gizmos that weren't really the deciding factor but you just wanted to get the car you would have got it with business nav because i just wanted to get the engine so i got it with the business nav and obviously shout out to the main man defined coding managed to help me source a, a screen so i've gone for the 8.8 .8 inch screen so it's the pro nav screen the wider one it's not a touch screen one but having that means i can get full display so I can't get CarPlay, so calm down, you can't get CarPlay with it, you've got to change the head unit to get that. But with this, I can get a full display and it can do the split screen as well. And again, like I said, me and Carl did a video for that. So obviously you're gonna to have to buy the screen and then Carl will obviously code it to tell your head unit that you've now got a wider screen. If not, it'll just say no signal. So make sure you get the correct one as well, because obviously there's different ones. And like I said, I've done a video previously with the main man, so make sure you hit him up for that as well. All right, so a remap. The reason why it's quite low down on the list is that these cars are powerful enough stock like literally stock there's not many cars that you, that's gonna like give you anything like any sort of problems on the road you know what i mean um so yeah a remap's quite low down but i'd highly recommend it if you do decide to sell the car if listen to me if you're about to sell the car because you fell in that love of it you're not happy with it remap it reason being it's a totally different car anyone with a remap car will tell you the first time they got in the car they they smiled it's not like oh yeah it's a little bit big difference boost i don't know how much extra the psi the boost gives you i believe it's like three or four or five or six or seven or eight or ten i don't know but there's definitely a massive 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 improvement over boost pressure and that's what the little kick in the back feeling you get 
you ain't gonna get that anywhere else, especially with the rear wheel drive for the money. It's a no brainer. So, before you're about to sell the car because you've fallen out of love with it, get it remapped, boot mod free, hit up the fine coding, definitely, definitely, definitely check that out. If you've just fallen out of love with it and you want to get a new car, remapping your car is technically making it a new car. And I mean that because it, it handles differently in terms of how it delivers the power. Obviously, suspension wise, nothing changes, but it delivers the power in a totally different way that will always put a smile on your face. And you can just smoke loads of more cars, especially the RS3s and stuff like that. You can smoke them, like you can smoke them. So, the diffuser you've got two options Ryger or the Maxton. I went for the Ryger simply because it looks more OEM and it's not as aggressive. Um, there was another, I think it was the Maxton one, it's fine, it looks cool, but. For me personally, the look I was going for and where the BMW, the M140 in particular, has nice soft edges. It's not no Lamborghini with the sharp edges and stuff like that. It's quite smooth, so it's very flat. So the, the Ryger, the shape of the Ryger matches it perfectly. Like Max doing, like I said, nothing wrong with it. But for me personally, with the way the rear looks, I just personally think Ryger is the best diffuser for the M140. Max then, guys, get at me, get at me. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gonna do nothing? Oh, wait, oh. Then that brings me to the final one. The exhaust, the res delete. So obviously when you go in stage two, part of your remap is, is about getting a high flow down pipe, whether you go for a sports cat like me, or whether you go for a D cat. So if you even when you decide to do it, it's gonna change the tone of the car. If you take a resonator out, it's gonna sound savage. I don't know how it sounds if people have like a, a D cat and a res delete, but Definitely, definitely change the tone of the car, which is why I'd say if you plan to keep your car stock, do the res delete. And the reason why I've left it quite low down is because it's one of those things that I've left till last in terms of all like more easy modifications and quite cheap modifications. The reason being is because, like I said, I knew I was going to run a high flow down pipe and I didn't want to destroy the tone of the car. So it's entirely up to you. I think Rick decides to call it, uh, Rick Tech decides to call it um, tractor spec because at low speeds there is a lot more grumble and when you accelerate the tone of the car is slightly different but but yeah it's entirely up to you but if you do want those nice like pop and bangs even from a stock system res deletes the way whether you decide to get uh, a system res deletes pipes res res delete pipes and swap it over or whether you decide to get it modded it's up to you but i'm a big fan of stock parts i'm a big fan of either keeping the stock parts or swapping them out and then obviously going back to stock if you decide to go on a track sort of thing like I have to do. Or even if you decide if you have to hand your car back. And obviously it's nice to have those parts to swap over and resell because then it can keep some resale value. Nothing wrong with modifying, but if you do modify, then it's quite hard to go back to stock. I've luckily got a loft, so obviously any parts like that, take it off, get it in the house and we put it in the loft. So it's a lot easier. Come on, come on, you're going to be here till Christmas, man. Hurry up. Come on, you better say thank you. Mm -hmm. Give me the flash, flash me. Actually, Jake's not. Probably not a good idea, isn't it? Sorry. So, yeah. So yes, so yes, guys. So yes, guys. <laughs> So yes guys, that is the video. It's a very simple one, but I thought it should be covered because I get a lot of questions day to day, or not day to day, I'm not that famous, but I do get a few questions from time to time about mods and what this and what that, and I'm gonna, I just try to cover it. If there is anything you need covering, obviously, obviously when, if you flash me, you're gonna have to cover something. But if you decide, if there is anything you need covering, make sure you hit me up guys. I haven't had my coffee today, so I'm not at the full ticket right now. But yeah, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.